All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. Uh, we broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. You can uh, go to our website and watch our um, recordings at your convenience, and all of our recordings are on our, our page there. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can get to our archives and how you can watch all of them. We do a uh, mixture of things here on the show, uh, book reviews, interviews, uh, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, uh, basically anything that may be of interest to libraries. Uh, for those of you joining us from not from Nebraska who might not know, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, and that's for all types of libraries. So you'll find things on our show for publics, K-12, uh, academics, um, colleges, correction facilities, museums, anything that has a library type thing <laughs> will have shows about it. So it's pretty broad. Um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations and do shows for us, and we sometimes bring in guest speakers. And today we have a mixture of that here today. We're going to help you make money. Yeah. <laughs> not a lot of money. <laughs> don't, don't get, don't, don't start, start buying some uh, With passports, this is what I'm doing at the Library Commission. And um, actually, I think I'll just start with you, Lisa. Um, just, you guys can just introduce yourself and what we're all doing okay. here. Lisa Kelly is um, from the Nebraska Library Commission here. So introduce yourself, who all is here <laughs> with us, and what we're talking about today. This all started about a year ago. Joe walked into the Library Commission. Uh, you were making a cold call. And you asked me something about, what do you think about providing passports? I don't even remember what your first question was. Do you remember? And so this is, Lisa is our head of reference yeah. department. Here yes, I'm sorry. I'm Lisa so, Kelly. And we, yeah. and we have Mary Sowers. Government Information Librarian. And you should introduce yourself. And I'm Joe Lear. I'm the Customer Service Manager at the Colorado Passport Agency. I'm responsible for Colorado, Nebraska, and Wyoming for outreach and the acceptance facility network. So that's what we're going to be talking right. about a little bit today. But yeah, part of my job is going around and soliciting interest to see if people would be interested in offering the service. And so I was in Lincoln for a separate uh, event and I looked it up on the internet and said, hey, what libraries are in the area? We all know how effective <laughs> and how efficient and how great the library experience is. And so part of the passport net, the passport acceptance network push is to um, solicit interest in the library network nationwide. And so I looked it up and walked in and said, hi, I'm Joe and I'm making a cold call to this office. And I, it's probably one of my least favorite things to do. I hate surprising people. Surprise, and it's such a yeah. random, mm -hmm. random thing to have pitched to you on a on a rainy day and uh, I think it was May of last year. So mm -hmm. came in and we just started chatting about the process. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's worse when a cold call is trying to sell you something. Yes. That was yes. That's probably a good thing. He's not trying to sell us something. No, no, it's more about no it, it's more about providing a service. Selling mm -hmm. you on providing a service. Yeah. So and that's the, what it was. And the post offices had just began to step down and not provide yeah. that service so you were looking for other mm -hmm. service providers. Yes, that was part of it. It is. It is that's a big part of it as a result of just some restructuring going on in the US Postal Service. They are nationwide about 75% of our passport network. Well, we're fortunate here in Nebraska, at least, we have about 55% postal and 45% non-postal, and these are different entities. And so, um, but they, in the major metropolitan areas, it is generally all of your post offices. Mm -hmm. And we always want to have redundancy in the in the network and make sure that there's sufficient coverage and there's there's maximum accessibility to what we do and to getting people's passports to them when they need it and having as great a customer experience as they can. Mm -hmm. And so the more sort of diversity in the network we have, the better. But we do know we we that has been a big push for the last two or three years is leaning on um, a lot of the libraries and leaning probably isn't the word I should be using, <laughs> but uh, working with the libraries to see if they would offer the service because everybody knows when you walk into a library, you're happy and it's nice <laughs> and it's a good experience and and everybody's excited to be there and a lot of times there are little kids running around so it's just it's a good experience and it can be 
different than some of the other experiences at our other uh, acceptance facilities. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that was the idea. It's like the, the idea. common thing that people think of, passport, go to the post office. But mm -hmm. you said that Always. Um, like, it's almost a half and a half here already in yeah. Nebraska that it wasn't yeah. in all in um, post offices. No. Where else, what, who else was doing it? Uh, district courts, oh, county okay. clerk. So you can go, if you were in the southern part of Omaha, you can go down to Papillion, mm -hmm. which by the way, the first time I pronounced it was Papillon because I thought it was French. And <laughs> sure, so, and so uh -huh. I pronounced it and I got some looks. They knew I was from out of town. But uh, <laughs> Sarpy County Clerk does it. The Sarpy County District Court did it for years. They're actually giving up the service on July 1st just because the county clerk has taken it over. But uh, in this area, the Nebraska University of Nebraska Lincoln does it as well. So public okay. universities can do it, community colleges any sort of public entity uh, that volunteers okay. to take it on. But we just know there is an already existing network of libraries in oh, the yeah. country in almost every community where you can go. And um, that's a great place to start with with mm -hmm. improving our acceptance process. Mm -hmm. So I could give you some history on that if you wanted, but uh, um, I don't know how much history you guys want on this <laughs> because it can get deep. But basically it was a... It was primarily, and it is, people ask me all the time, oh, you work for the post office. Whenever I say, oh, yes. I do passports, you work for the post office. And I'm like, no, we're actually, they accept the application. So they're the forward-facing portion of, and the acceptance network is a forward-facing portion of uh, passport services, and that's what everybody thinks about. And so mm -hmm. when people rate our services, some of them will rate what happens behind the scenes and what happens when we call them and communicate with them, but primarily their focus is how they were treated when they went in to submit their application. And so for us, it's a primary uh, point of emphasis to make sure that our network is trained and we have high quality facilities that are highly engaged in the process. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where the cold call came from. So that's yeah. how I ended up walking <laughs> in here a year you ago. Want people who like I said, understand customer service yes. and serving the public to come wander in that library. Yes. That's what we do. Yes. Right. And calm, you know, very calm environment. It's different than Not all the time, in other places. <laughs> so yes. Definitely yes. welcoming. I wouldn't know yes. say calm. Yeah. So, yeah, right. that was kind of, that's what we were thinking. So you made the cold call and it worked. Yes, it did. I was shocked. I, I was, I've, I've done this a hundred times and most people, oh, yeah, I'll get back to you. And I never hear back from most of them are very cordial and they're kind and they listen to me. And then uh, I leave and I never hear from them again, but I, and which is fine. You know, I try to give people information. I, I was telling, we were all talking, try to be as transparent about the process as possible, that this isn't free money, that mm -hmm. uh, you will have some issues here and there, although we haven't had any here apparently, but uh, <laughs> we're aware of it. I, Yes, you would be aware. They would make you aware. So most of the time, I mean, it is very straightforward. You take the applications, you get the money, uh, you spend some time with people, and you do some training, some recertification each year, and then you, um, and then, you know, sort of your involvement and it is gone once the application is submitted and we do all the communications after that so it is sort of the the point of entry and um yeah for years so I think it's it good to know i think a lot of libraries would be a little uh intimidated by we're going to be in charge of and responsible for passports and all yes. of that goes along with that and it's not it's just the first step yes of, well it's helpful that our staff here have been through the passport process i give passports as gifts for graduation so mm -hmm. i've always believed in them and i always think they're a great thing to have in your possession but Absolutely. it's not so different from any other library service really mm -hmm. yeah. i sort of compare it to notary oh, yes yeah. you have Fair. to have another person witness that it's you <laughs> witness that picture matches it's i i don't know if you would agree with that but i think it's kind of a higher level notary yeah yeah it is it is it's a lot of certification and verification mm -hmm. and um some training each year but yeah i mean that's i think that's a pretty good comparison mm -hmm. for that so mm -hmm. So we're the only library in Nebraska currently providing passport services, and we wanted to say to other libraries, mm -hmm. Nebraska and externally, uh, this is how it's worked for us, mm -hmm. and we're still here. <laughs> 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 and, and so we invited Joe here to tell us about yes. what he pitched to me, and then Mary and I can reflect on how it's been going for us. And we've just been providing passports since August. Right. So. Uh, 
some a little shakier than others, <laughs> some quite confident. <laughs> and we do have another colleague who provides um, passports, she's not here today. and she is not here today. So uh, there are three of us currently here at the commission that are able to provide the service mm -hmm. for. Um, Linda got the training and answers questions mm -hmm. for us on the phone um, when they come in. So. Mm -hmm. Anyway, want to start with let's have Joe. Yeah, let's yeah, have Joe sure. Begin. We can get into it. Yeah. If you want to, you can use that. Okay. Keyboard. Sounds good. So again, I'm Joe Lear. I am responsible for the acceptance network in this region. I work out of our Aurora, Colorado passport agency. We're one of 29 domestic passport acceptance facilities around the country. And one of the things I always express to people, to the acceptance networks, to any facility managers when I go around is, look, we have 29 passport facilities. Obviously, that's not enough accessibility mm -hmm. for the amount of applications that we accept. And that's where you come in. And that's why the acceptance network is so integral to what we do. We would not be able to do this without people offering the service and my greatest pitch and I always say the thing I can offer the most is if at the end of this you are interested you contact us we go through the process you have for the most part complete autonomy for how much time you devote to the process you can devote seven days a week we'd love that if you want to work 24 7 I am <laughs> all for that I don't even think I need to get approval from DC for that however realistically I know um, that's not possible so you know, whatever time you want to devote to the program is up to you. We don't come back to you and say, well, look, you got to do 10 hours a day. You got to have four people online. We do have some minimum requirements. A couple of people have to be trained. And that's so you have one primary and one backup. The training is once per year. You have to recertify. You have to do a new agent training at the beginning. That's about eight hours. And generally, we're happy to come and, and do a training on site for that, especially when we're designating a new facility, just because we want you to know how important we think it is. So we will come and do a new agent training on site. If you can get enough people yearly, we'll come and do recertification training in person. However, we still offer the web-based training that we have which means you don't have to send employees to all around the place, take them out of the office. They can do it on their time off, uh, on their free time, however you devote, uh, however you want to devote uh, time to that recertification process. It's once a year. That's about four hours a year. And then we'll send out notices every year. But the, the, the freedom that you have to sort of dictate your own program um, because we are coming in soliciting interest and we are not, we're overseeing it, but we are not managing it necessarily. You manage your own facility, you determine how much time, how many people you want to put towards this, depending on how much revenue you're looking for, how much, how many human resources you have, uh, whatever the interest sort of is in it. We will, for the most part, if you're a library, we'll take you on. We don't even have to get pre-approval for our libraries generally. Why is that? Uh, that's because they love libraries. That's literally because <laughs> because we love libraries and because everybody knows our former, my former boss's boss's boss um, loved the experience of going into libraries. And so yeah. she said, if you can get a library on board, I don't care how much time they're devoting to it, you bring them on board and you, you give people another access. Yeah. Well, it's well, great. I mean, it, well, and that's sort of, that's where we are with our opinions of libraries. It's not just Absolutely. me saying that, it's so coming down from headquarters yeah. saying. In general, the public has the perception that libraries are a, a pleasant place to go. Yeah. And uh, good customer service. Yes. yes. So we've got that reputation. Yes, yeah, some well trained, great staff. That's demonstrated here. I mean, it is. I mean, this is the perfect uh, example of it. So, it, and it's. I mean, that's my general experience going into libraries. We have, and actually, we are looking to add on a few more libraries in the region, and. You know, I've never had a bad experience going into a library. Even when I walk in and cold call, you guys give me enough time to sit there and listen and you ask very informed questions and very smart questions. And I know that, you know, I can't fool anybody doing this and I don't try. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I'll try to give you as much information in this hour as I can. But we are one of 29 passport agencies around the country and they're mainly in major metropolitan areas. We have a few print facilities which are not in 
metro areas. I mean, they're not as significant of metropolitan areas. We have one in Hot Springs, Arkansas, another one in Tucson, which I know Tucson people know, but it's a relatively small um, population center for us to be in. So we have a couple of print facilities where they just print the passports, but for the most part, the agencies are spread out throughout the country and they're in the places you would think of, New York, LA, Chicago, um, DC, Miami, Houston, and on and on. So we also have one in El Paso right along the border as well. Yeah. So uh, we do have them spread out. We want to make sure that we are there for the emergency travelers, for the urgent travelers, for the big business folks that um, that don't have the time to necessarily um, take an hour or two hours out of their day. They can come in and see us and they can't be without their passport. The airline industry, obviously they need to, the pilots and the flight attendants have to have passports on hand. And so our focus at our agencies, at a majority of these agencies are counter-based, uh, focused on people traveling in two weeks or four weeks with a visa. So we don't do, you know, the idea isn't for us to be sort of an access point for all the public all the time. We are there for the critical travel need. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why we are there. And that's why we also have a network of 7,900 plus acceptance facilities around the country. And this is where 70, 75% of the work comes from. We get a small percentage at our counter. We have a couple other ways of getting applications, but most people, when they apply, they come into the library, their local library, their post office. I know everybody thinks of the post offices. Uh, we're trying to diversify our, like I said, diversify our network a little bit. And so the more public entities we have on, the more representation we have on, the better it is for everyone. The more accessible we are, the better the experiences. Uh, and then people sort of use each other and leverage their relationships to figure out how to make appointment systems and to better refine the process. And so um, these acceptance facilities, that's why we are so dependent upon the acceptance facility network and the point of access at these public entities taking a majority of our applications. We do not take them at our offices. Most people in Denver don't even know we have an office in Aurora, except the people who need to know. They all think of, oh, here are the places I go to apply. Here in Lincoln, they think of, here's where I go to apply. Wherever you are, they'll think of you before they will us. And so the better this network is and the, um, the more sort of robust it is, the better we are off. So we also have some uh, military acceptance facilities worldwide. We have them here domestically on bases. We also have them all around the world where we have acceptance agents trained to take military passports as well. That's a whole different ball game. You're not going to be doing that. There is I, I there is the off that. chance yeah, sure that you can. Yeah. Yes. And so that is part of being an acceptance facility in that you may see these cases. Uh, they are different. We try to give you as much instruction as possible from afar. And we have this big passport agent reference guide, which gets it's supposed to get updated every two years. It's usually like four years. So, um, so it, yeah, 2016 <laughs> was the last time it was updated. Before that, it was 2012. So there's more of a pattern of four years, but it is we attempt to get it out every two years to uh, the facilities to update any kind of changes. But it is the primary guide for accepting applications. Mm -hmm. We have that on hand at each agency, each facility, you're supposed to have that on hand in order to look things up like a military passport submission. And what do I do with this? Because you're not going to do that often and you may see one of these a year. And when you do, you're not expected to memorize it. And so we do have resources for you. I try to be a resource for the facilities. Um, we are the main point of contact internally for passport services. So whenever you have questions about whatever it might be, the recertification process or just coming on board. Hey, what's this look like? How long does it take? Um, do we offer photos? Do we have to offer photos? There are all sorts of questions that come up in the process of um, investigating whether or not you, you would be interested in doing this. And I try to be an access point for that as well. So. Uh, State Department, just trying to give you a little overview, we have 3,900 employees, that is the U.S. Mm -hmm. Department of State, that's not the state government, people always ask, oh, which state do you work for? <laughs> no, it's a big, big State Department, um, the one in, out of D.C., so we are part of the U.S. Department of State, Consular Affairs, 
uh, passport services. We have 2,100 government employees and about 1,800. So it's almost 55, 45 for, if my math is correct, for maybe almost 52, 48 for our government to contract staff. Uh, and then we have two call centers. One is located in Lansing, Michigan, and one is in Phoenix, Arizona, and they handle all incoming calls. So when you submit applications and you send them, your job is done. We tell people that once that application is in our hands, we're the ones who have to communicate. So really, a majority of the time, a vast majority of the time, once the application is submitted, your job is done. Um, you track them to make sure that we get them, but once you know that we are in receipt of these applications, um, you have done your job and it's up to us to communicate if need be to issue the passport to get it to the correct place to resolve any sort of issues on the back end. So um, that's that. That's just a quick little overview of passport services. I don't want to kill you with slides. I know we're the government, <laughs> so we love death by PowerPoint. So I'm trying not to get you too much on this. But just to give you an idea, this is how the country is divided up based on the acceptance facility network. And so you can see, just to give you an idea, Denver, um, we're right there smack and sort of in the middle. But uh, so we're responsible for Colorado, Nebraska, and Wyoming. Tucson's responsible for Arizona and Utah, so you get an idea, and this is all based on the agency resources, how many customer service managers we have. There's a formula, an algorithm that I've, I've been told they use to determine <laughs> how these how these uh, sort of regions are divided up. You have the National Passport Center in New Hampshire, which is a gigantic facility. It's about 900 employees compared to our little office in Denver, which is 66 employees, but the National Passport Center also has part of Ohio. So it's in there and they work out of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. So, um, you know, they have people that determine how these regions are to be divided up and how they're to be delegated to the local agency. But that's how that's how sort of we manage the acceptance facility network nationwide. Does anybody have any questions? You guys have any questions about this? Okay. Do you have any questions? I know some people yeah, came in after we started. Talking. No, that's fine. <laughs> um, on your GoToWebinar interface, you can just type into your interface your question anytime you have one. And I'm watching that here on my laptop and I'll be able to grab any uh, questions you have. So that's a map of the United States according to the passport world. <laughs> so this is what we do, and this is it's uh, <clears throat> it's okay. So our vision: we strive to set worldwide standard for secure passport. We try to issue passports, facilitate travel while maintaining the integrity of the process. Those are two focuses. We do this in a variety of different ways, um, but those are that's sort of our vision and our mission, and we want to make sure that. People traveling have access to our services. When they get access, they get good quality customer service. And then when we issue that passport, we're issuing it to the people who say who who verify that they are who they say they are and they are US citizens. And so that's what you really do at the point of entry. If you do anything else, you verify these people are who they say they are. There's nothing odd about it. Um, there's nothing we should be concerned on the back end about it. And if there is, we try to give you ways of communicating with us that this is something we may want to look into a little bit closer. But that is your primary function is ingesting all these applications, verifying that we have correct documentation, uh, that's citizenship, that's birth certificates, that's consular reports of birth abroad, naturalization certificates, all these get sent in to us. Uh, the driver's license, you're just verifying that you think you have a legitimate driver's license there, that it's not something strange, it doesn't feel like they just made it at home and laminated it. Um, you know, you don't have uh, you don't have me walk in with somebody's ID who says they're 6'4", because I'm not. So, you know, these are the things that you do uh, on the front end at, at the acceptance process, at the acceptance point. So we're verifying citizenship and identity. We monitor travel rights. Um, criminal issues may prevent somebody from being issued a passport, child support issues, unpaid taxes. There are different things. We will stamp passports for uh, violent child, child sex offenders. It's part of Megan's law that if somebody gets this and they've been convicted of a crime, there are very specific 
requirements for them if they have been convicted of these crimes that we will stamp in the back of their passport that they have been convicted so that when they do travel local authorities will know that mm -hmm. so that was one of our new um, sort of our new initiatives but uh, yeah this is I mean we look at so we do we do reviews once we get the applications to verify that people should be issued passports and then we try to increase public awareness so I do some outreach and we'll go around and try to raise awareness of our services of what we do of here's what you do when you're traveling abroad look up your local consulates and embassies register your trip um, make sure if you do lose your passport, you know where to go in case of an emergency. If you don't have, most people don't know, Medicare doesn't cover you abroad. So do you have insurance to cover you abroad? Different things. So we'll try to raise awareness for all the different services we provide. And then uh, consular affairs in general, we also staff all the foreign service, uh, all the all the overseas, the consulates and embassies around the world, the U.S. consulates and embassies around the world to provide those services to people abroad when they need it. There are a lot of expats out there, expatriates who live abroad and voting rights, and they help them with all sorts of different everyday things as well as resolving any kind of death abroad, um, criminal issues. If somebody winds up in jail, they do welfare visits. So. They really try to look out for the best interest of the American traveling public. So that's part of passport services as well. But that's just give you a, a basic overview of what we do. Ooh. Here's our numbers over the last, what is that, 17 years. Um, you can see we did over 21 million applications last year. And again, a majority of these come in through the acceptance facility network, which is why we are, I always, I always pound this home. This is why we are so uh, reliant on these networks providing the good service because they're providing most of uh, the information and they are what people think of when they think of passport services. They don't think of me. They think of everybody on the front lines who's providing the service. So we did about 21 million passports last year, predicting a little over 20 million this year. We are reliant upon the economy on the happenings around the world. And, um, and so our, our work sort of fluctuates from year to year and other laws and regulations and rules that have been put in place, we are relying on those. We're very seasonal in our work. Right now is our busy season. So um, all people planning their summer vacations. Yes, or, yeah. yes, March. It's always, you know, it's funny, January through June, I always try to go out and tell people, wait until September, apply in August. Do this. So when my passport came up to apply, my two kids, I had to get them passports. We were going to Mexico. I applied on February 1st, like everybody else in the world. So <laughs> even knowing what I know, I still do. It's, so it's human nature. It's fine. It's really hard to to um, to get into people's minds and tell them, look, you need to reapply. You need to apply at a different time, apply in October. You'll get it back in half of the time. But yeah. just to give you an idea, we are very seasonal in our work and our demand. And exactly. January through June to July is very busy. And then the last five months, we, we take trying to um, bandage our wounds and make up for the time and send people on training, do professional development and things that have been neglected for seven months. And we do a lot of overtime during this time of the year. So, um, so yeah, that's just to give you a little bit of idea of workload. And then I put in the bottom right corner, uh, our workload in Colorado and Nebraska and Wyoming based on the fiscal year, which is October 1st through September 30th of the following year. That is where we pull our fiscal year numbers from. So in Colorado, you can see we did 355,000. Nebraska did a little over 85,000. Wyoming, 25,000. So it's obviously based on population. But um, yeah, those are our numbers. And you can see there's a steady increase over time and more people travel. Usually about 35% of US citizens hold a, an active passport. And um, yeah, they provide all sorts of services to those folks traveling abroad. So, yes, a big jump. Yes, 2006, 2007. Oh, I, I wasn't going to talk about that. Oh, sorry. That's the that's the before time. No, that was uh, <laughs> so in 2007 we implemented the process. It, it was so ah, that's okay. when everybody probably remembers the last time they heard of passports was in 2007. They implemented the 2004. 
uh, Intelligence Reform and Prevention Act, I think it was, and it was implemented in 2007. And everybody who's traveled to Mexico in 2005 on their birth certificate knows what I'm talking about because the next time you tried to travel in 2007, you couldn't use your birth certificate. It uh, said that you would need a government-approved travel document to get to Mexico, Canada, Bermuda, and the Caribbean. And those were places that were previously exempt from requiring a government approved travel document. And so it spiked our work and we yeah. kind of knew it was coming and it went from 12 million. As you can see, we generally go up and down a couple of million. Yeah, it's not that significant. Exactly. That was a spike. Our processing times right now are, and I, I'll send this out six to eight weeks. It's actually been up. It's the first time in four years we we've, we've increased them just because I of our see workload. Now too, 17, 18, it's going yes. up more and more than what it had been yes. between since 2007. Yeah. And just to give you an idea, in 2007 we had 15 passport facilities. Right now we have 29, and we're doing almost the same amount of work. So yeah. it was it was a bit of a problem. Yeah. We our processing times went up to 12 to 16 weeks and. Those of us who experienced it all always talk about it as sort of a, a line of demarcation. Yeah, there were a lot of acceptance yeah. facilities who wanted to bow out, but everybody everybody sort of came together. But the process, there were congressmen missing trips. It was oh, it was yeah. a problem. And so what they did after 2007 is they said this will never happen again. So they allocated I think it was 100 million, 80 million to passport services to add new facilities. And so that's what we did. And that's why we went from 15 to 29. Denver, we were added in 2005, the first counter agency that was opened in 25 years, I think it was. So they, it's passports had not been increasing just overall. It had been pretty stagnant. And then we added 14 other agencies after that. And we added it in Minneapolis, in Atlanta, you know, the the busiest airport, Hartsfield International Airport, the busiest airport, one of the busiest airports in the world. Atlanta didn't have a passport agency. Think of that significant population yeah. size. So they added one there. Um, we've added them um, sort of all over. El Paso got added as a result of this. And Tucson, we added the print facility. San Diego didn't have one. That was added on. So we really have increased our network as a result. So 2007 really was a defining moment for passport yeah. services. I wasn't going to talk about that, but I appreciate you putting <laughs> well, that out because right I lived face, through it. So, so yeah. I know it's like, wow, that was a significant jump, but yeah. that was a one time. Yeah. We don't predict that happening again. One of the reasons I was out here last year or yeah, we were still trying to beef up our network, but we were worried all those applications that came in in 2007, Passports are good for 10 years. And so that meant in 2017, we were looking renewals. for a jump yeah. Yeah, in our renewal applications. And you do see it. I mean, we did go yeah. up 3 million, which is pretty significant. But we had the infrastructure to support that sort of yeah. increase this time. So, yes. So, yeah, that is, I, I always like looking at that and showing yeah. people. But this is probably be every 10, there'll be a lull, and every 10 years it's going to go spike for, you know, yeah, because it's, of that, because of that special year. Because of year that until one like year, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least for the foreseeable future. This one we were really concerned with just because mm -hmm. it's hard to predict. And again, we're, the economy, is it good? Is it bad? Are mm -hmm. things going on overseas that are encouraging travel or discouraging travel? And because of that, it is hard to predict. And so we did staff up. And a lot of what we do is working in January, and February, and March, and April, a lot of overtime, trying to keep our shelves clear in case we do get hit with a mass amount of work. So. And Joe, would yeah. you talk about the yes. red on those, please? Oh, sure. And what the difference is? The passport yeah. card. card. So, yeah, those are passport cards. Those came around in 2009. And this was, again, as part of saying you'd need a government approved travel document to get to Mexico, Canada, Bermuda, and the Caribbean. There were a lot of people just taking cruises, a lot of mm -hmm. truckers. There's a, a, a significant yeah. travel industry where people are just traveling by land and sea here in the Western Hemisphere. And mm -hmm. they didn't want to carry passport books and they didn't want to have to buy them. And so part of the State Department's compromise to that was saying, okay, we will create this passport card and this is only good for land and sea travel. So mm -hmm. uh, just for your own personal benefit or for anybody that asks when they look it up, you cannot fly on that passport card. Do not show up at Kansas City Airport or whatever airport you are and present that hoping you're going to be able to fly to Mexico. You cannot get on that plane. It's only good for land and sea travel <laughs> to Canada, Bermuda, Caribbean and Mexico. So uh, it's just a little card and I could 
pull it out of my wallet if anybody wants to see it. But uh, and I can show you, and it looks a lot like a driver's license. It's also helpful in that if you are, and I don't know where everybody's coming in from, but there are states that are not real ID compliant, and this is this is in theory it's going to be enforced at some point in the near future where states that are not real id compliant you won't be able to fly domestically on that driver's license and so you're talking california texas illinois new york some of the most by far most populated uh, states in our region are not real id compliant and so one of the things that we go around and try to tell people in these states are well apply for your passport card you can get this you can keep it in your wallet you know, if and when yeah, that is ever that enforced, instead. exactly. You can use that instead of getting to the airport and not being told your driver's license isn't sufficient. It would not be a good day. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the passport card, it's just a, it's not a cheaper alternative. It is cheaper. It's same validity period. It's 10 years for adults, five years for anybody under the age of 16. Uh, same process to get it. It's just a little bit, it is less expensive, but you also can't use it to fly. So. Okay. So that's it. Did I cover that? Is yeah. that sufficient? Yes, okay. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for pointing that out. So is that something that people can come to us to apply for? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Are part of the application. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Now you're Which kind you want. Okay. More than more often than not, they're going to be applying for their passport book, yes. especially in Colorado. When you go to Seattle and when you go to San Diego, places along the border, Detroit, oh, sure. we have a new new agency. When I say new, I've been doing this sorry for 17 years. So anything within the last five year, or over five years is um, is still kind of new to me if they've been added in the last 10 years. And so uh, Detroit, if you go to any of these these agencies, they have card printers there on site. They can print them up. If you came into Denver, we actually don't have the card printers on site just because mm -hmm. demand isn't there. Mm -hmm. We're, I think, 1,500 miles. Don't Google how far Denver is from the border. I don't know, <laughs> but I think it's it's a long ways and we're very landlocked. And so people in general, unless they're truck drivers, we will get some of those. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll get people driving to Mexico and Canada as well occasionally, mm -hmm. but most people that come in our agencies, most people that apply in the Midwest, in the Intermountain West are applying for passport books because they're flying. Some people sure. will drive. I get it. If you go on a hunting trip with friends, motorcycle trip up to Canada, up to Alaska, uh, then, then they will. But that's a small percentage of what we get. And because of that, not every agency has a card printer there on site, and we do not. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So some points that we that I'd like to emphasize for anybody considering coming on board and taking on the um, taking on this responsibility would be it's a new source of revenue for for you thirty five dollars goes to the acceptance facility and depending on the services they're asking for after that the rest of it goes to passport services for processing but the thirty five dollars is kept by the acceptance facility for each new application they take. You can take photos on site, and you can, if you go into the postal service, you see, I think almost all of them will take photos on site, so that is an option as well. Again, it's an option, none of this is required. $35 is required, but the photos, you do not have to take those on site. That's something you could add on later after you feel like feel more comfortable with the process and that you understand it a little bit more. Maybe it would be too much to take on all at once. The photos aren't just for passports. They're also for people getting visas. My parents are in Russia right now and they just got a visa. And so you take photos for visas. You take photos for all. You'd be amazed at things that people will come in once they find out you provide the photo service. They will use that um, specific photo that is printed for a passport they'll use it for any number of things but that is another thing that's up to you how much you charge if you charge two hundred dollars per photo I may reach out to you I, <laughs> I in general I'll let you be unless it's unless you're somewhere outside the bell curve Sussive, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then we may address that we may look at that but um, yeah that's totally up to each facility whether or not they want to provide that service they don't have to if you're in an area where you don't want to, and there's a Walgreens, a Walmart, a FedEx, Kinko's, a AAA, a Sam's Club, which is, you know, most most places in this country, they do those services. They provide the photos, and so you do not have to take that on. Um, but that is an option if you want to if you want to do it. Um, part of our thing is you can bring in people maybe who wouldn't have come to your library otherwise. 
and they'll come in to apply and they'll stay and they'll look around and remember how neat it is to be in a library. And I have to admit, in between my time in school and uh, when I had children, I didn't get to as many libraries as mm -hmm. I should have. I get it. Yeah. Um, and I always feel bad about that. But once I had children, I realized, wow, what a great place this is. And so we take our kids you know, a couple of times a week to our library. But uh, for people who may not do that, for people like me in the in-between time, uh, it may bring them in, they stay, they'll look around, um, realize all the other services that you provide at your office and what a great experience and how happy it makes you to go into a library. So uh, you are providing a public service and it is a great access point. This is something that you know, the traveling public needs and the more access we have, the better. And then you have, again, you have freedom to devote as much time or as little time to the program as you see fit. That is all up to you. And then at the end of this, you can come on board. You can do it for six months. Uh, I'll be disappointed. But if you come on for six months and you say, look, this just isn't for us. We've had that in the past. Uh, I won't force you to stay on. You have the option to opt out at any time for whatever reason. Um, the only thing... You know, the the only time that it ever becomes an issue that it's us looking at you would be if you have employees selling information. So obviously employees have to be <laughs> free of federal crimes. Um, can't have been, they can't have been convicted of a, what is it, a federal felony in whether it's any kind of integrity question. So there is a whole, there's a list of requirements for those employees, but you know, I don't have to worry about this. I just want to throw that out there, that there are certain requirements for facilities to come on board, for employees to work. They have to be full-time employees or um, work a majority of the time, I think, is our wording. So, um, so there are requirements, and those can be prohibitive for some places. But uh, if we get to that point where you are interested and you're asking us about it, I'll send you all the information you need to know at that time, and we can address that. So... Um, yeah, this is kind of some of the advantages that you may find. We do have a couple of questions Yay. about the process. Sure. Um, and I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if this was asking about. For instance, I currently assist at our library. Individuals applying for a passport, new and renewals, also make their appointments. Um, is this a service that I do in my library without a fee? Well, is that what the $35? Yeah, you is? actually, yeah. If, I mean, you can, you can assist them. That's great. And we say thank you from, uh, on behalf of Passport Services. Right. I think you're providing it without providing the acceptance portion, which is great. Mm -hmm. If you are helping people out, um, yeah, that you can do that free charge. That's up to you. That is a service you provide. If you provided the acceptance uh, of that application, then you would have to charge. Right. I think she's talking about, yeah, I when somebody comes in and says, I yeah. want to apply and yep. go to the website, yep. I'm helping them go for that. Exactly. But actually accepting the documents and doing that, yes. that's just, this is the step we're talking about, and this is where you do charge the $35 extra. <laughs> And so is that thirty-five dollars is in addition to what people have to pay just to for the passport itself? Yes. Okay. If they yeah, do it online, line, yes. is it it's just the passport fee, or is there some sort of extra? No, I mean you can't really do anything. We're getting there. Okay. You know, we're right now. We're yeah. not quite there, but we are getting there. Where we'll have online application process. But we did a pilot of it in 2015, where renewals could apply online with no name changes. Um, however. Uh, we have not rolled it out since then, and they're still working out some of the kinks of the system, and so you still have to do it in, person. Have to do it in person. Now, the, the renewals, technically, you don't have to go to anywhere except to mail it. So you can mail it from your, your mailbox, but uh, these are just continuations of the prior passport and the commitment and sure. the, what we swore you into on the prior application. So okay. what we're talking about are first-time applicants, applicants who haven't had a passport in the last 15, 20 years, anything like that. that those are the people you would be servicing. Right. So. And Krista, uh, also an answer to that question. Um, we have a customer coming in tomorrow, or this afternoon, sorry, um, privately, a, a separate from her regular appointment, because she has filled out an application twice, and it's come back twice as being incorrect, so I'm going to work with her personally to help make right. sure she gets it filled out correctly, and, sure. and then she'll sure. come in for her appointment next week, and then we'll finish the end. Yeah, so it's kind of like yeah. a pre-appointment to make sure you're doing everything right, right before yeah. you come in. Yeah. Yeah. And That's we've like, only yeah, done a know. handful of hand holding mm -hmm. like that. Usually uh, most people, you know, figure it out and get it 
filled out correctly, but um, um, this one needed a little extra hand holding. <laughs> There's that always happens. Yeah. And then another question, I'm not sure if this is anything that you even know about. What would it take to get a photo machine for the library to take the photos of the library? No. What do you need to do? Do we do photos here? We are no. not, and no. we will not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> because, uh, Walgreens is right there. Yes. For us, yes. yes. We so have like a block, block away. away. Yes. Yes. You need to provide the service that's one block away. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. It would be another source of revenue, which is what we right. tell people. Right, but it would be equipment to maintain. It is. Yes. It right. is. And it's that, in the purchase. Is this is special equipment. It is. So I can't make any recommendations. I can't make uh, recommendations for private vendors uh, just because I can't show preference to one um, one over the other. And so what we do is say Google Passport Photo um, cameras, and it'll come up with different options. They run anywhere from eight hundred to a thousand dollars. And what we tell people is, if you take you know a hundred photos at ten dollars a photo for the first year, you pay that off. So um, yeah. yeah, you can make it up, and you make it up very quickly. And that's one of the reasons the post office uh, pretty much mandates that their places take them, mm -hmm. is because uh, they do make a large profit off of it, especially mm -hmm. in the metro areas where you have people getting Chinese visas and Russian visas to travel to these places. Um, they provide that service for them as well. So it's independent of the passport process and they'll just provide the photos. But yeah, if you have places around you, um, they can take them, but there is a process. You have to order that. I mean, we can certainly talk about it, but that is primarily up to the facility to determine which one they go with and how they maintain it, and that is very independent of what I do. That is up to your internal sure. facility management. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Cool. So, very nice. So this is me. Again, I didn't want to kill you with <laughs> with slides, so I didn't put many in there. I uh, tried to highlight the bullet points, tell you who we are why it might be advantageous to you and who I am. And if you are interested, uh, that doesn't, I, I think we can see that, okay, that was a really bad idea of putting light gray um, on dark black, but. No, you can see, um, it looks fine on the, on the computer. Screen. Oh, good, good. Don't so we can water. see it. And, uh, okay. and so if you have any questions, please follow up with me. Again, I'm responsible for Colorado, Nebraska, and Wyoming, but obviously I work with about 70 colleagues like myself around the country. We all work very closely together. If you are not in this region, but you are still interested, reach out to me. I will point you to the correct agency that that will manage um, your what your interests in the uh, in the acceptance process. So I can point you to the right place. So don't feel bad if you're in Kansas. You know that would be New Orleans, but I know New Orleans really well, and so I'll just point you down to New Orleans, and I will send this to them, and they will be as happy to hear from you as I would be. So um, it is one of those things we are trying as much as possible to solicit interest because again, it's it's for our own benefit. It's for the benefit of the public. Hopefully for your benefit that uh, you provide the service, but we know the experience and we know the quality of service that's provided at our library system. And because of that, we go to a lot of libraries and I'll do cold calls. So yeah. uh, and I'll come on and talk about passports and see if you have any interest in becoming a <laughs> passport acceptance facility. Anybody, do you guys have anything to add? All right, so yeah, um, so that's great, all about the process and how you get that. Now, I'm sure you probably want to know from people who've been doing this, yes. what does it really mean? Yes. You know, Joe's a great salesman for this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a salesman. And, and <laughs> um, but you know, you guys want to talk about what actually has been going on since last. Yes. Since, since last it. August. Yeah. And did you want to go to the website or? Um, I can pass. This off. Yeah, sure. Yeah. If you well, no. Um, actually, I just think we have some narrative. I only okay. have narrative. Um, mm -hmm. People think why libraries, and Joe has said, well, people trust them. But I would just assert to you that many of your mission statements are lifelong learning for public libraries, and what better lifelong learning it is to get a passport. And so, mm -hmm. I think sometimes people don't see a connection, and uh, and I would also insert that reference interviews and what we do for our passport. Very about the similar. same thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of questions that we need to ask, yeah. and now we've gotten better at prompting the right questions. Do you have a checkbook? Mm -hmm. Is the first one yeah. we get or to did ask. Did you bring a check? Yes. Did you bring it? Yeah. Yes. 
And we've had many people comment to us that we are a nice place to get a passport. Yes. I think our library is not any different from yours. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you meet interesting people. Our youngest applicant was four months old, brought in in the winter, and we had to kind of uncover her, and <laughs> look at the picture, and make sure she matched for for the duration. Mm -hmm. And people have said kind things to us. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a sense of pride in that as well. Mm -hmm. What would you add to that, Mary? Um, I just think that um, people, first of all, appreciate our location. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think just based on comments that various people have said to us, being downtown where we are is very mm -hmm. convenient for a mm -hmm. lot of people. Um, although the post office on the west, on the east side of town now, they find that more convenient. So I think location has a lot yeah. to do with it. And so I think that's what drives a lot of our traffic is we're easy to get to. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a parking garage next, right next right door next and you know, things yeah. like that. So, And what, what it took to take it on was convincing colleagues. <laughs> I mean, Not the, hard. And the <laughs> colleagues have, my colleagues have passports, so they yes. were aware. Mm -hmm. And then talking to my boss and saying, what do you think? Would this be out of line with, with what our commissioners think this was a good service? Mm -hmm. So, And then, most importantly, our IT staff constructed a system for us yes. that would accept applications online by a system of checking, I have this, mm -hmm. I have this. And Krista, if you do want to bring up that list, yeah. Krista's going to show you the list that you will encounter when you see that the Nebraska Library Commission provides passports. And in Lincoln, we have th three locations that uh, Joe has talked about. So this forces you to say, I have this application, proof of citizenship, proof of identity, a photograph, and if you scroll down, you have to have two checks. Before, when I sit down with any applicant, I say, let's make sure you've got everything mm -hmm. before we even start. Right. And that couldn't be any simpler. So they have to check all those. We have selected here for a library that's open only Monday through Friday to provide passports Tuesday afternoons and Thursday mornings. Mm -hmm. So we are only at this two days a week. Mm -hmm. We've all really felt that that's about right. It is. Yes, yeah. it's enough. It's yeah. uh, not too much. Mm -hmm. It's not. Uh, it doesn't weigh us down because we have other stuff to do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we're librarians, but we are also mm -hmm. answering passport reference questions too with that's people we'll never time. meet. Yeah. Yes, that's correct so people can call us and ask us passport questions. And this um, checklist was especially important when people would call us um, and nine times out of ten they would be wanting to make an appointment over the phone and uh, which we started doing very quickly in the you know, when we started this and by having this checklist we can go through based on what they tell us and say, do you have this? Do you have this? And then we can submit it and then give them appointment time choices. Mm -hmm. um, and go uh, ahead, Kristen, you'll see what that looks like. Yes, yeah, I'm going to check yes. all the boxes. And yes. then there's that in. all important yes. orders. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that one. And then, yeah, then schedule an appointment. And we can do this for them over the phone, but nine times out of 10, they have come to this themselves and they. Yes, like so. Yeah, they want next Tuesday afternoon. Here are the appointment times that are available. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, there are still appointments left uh, for Thursday. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so. you can see this is why we come to libraries <laughs> because this is what happens. Then we receive this the email them. and we have some canned text. Yes. And we immediately respond. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be helping you. Yes. I'll be here. Yes. Here's all the things we want to make sure you have. If you've got any questions before you get here, call us. Yes. Call us and all of this, if you're looking here, something. This is not something that is provided by. No. Mm -hmm. no. no. Our in-house tech. So when Joe um, said we're autonomous, he couldn't yeah. be. Uh, yeah. Which is to say, you set your own rules. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So other yeah. places may do it differently, and you may do it differently. But this is an idea of what you could put together. Right. And the kind of things, especially right. that checklist, before someone comes to you. Make sure they have all these things. Understand what all these things. You do have designations where items need to be locked. Yes. yes. And so yes. we have a locking file cabinet yep. and the passport key, and um, so we do have items that are locked, mm -hmm. um, just in a filing cabinet. Yep. And yep. so there are some yep. designations here that we've had to abide abide by. Sure. But. It's been a fascinating service to pursue, and as we're getting close to 11, I would just no, okay. say, um, when I've told people that we provide passports, there is still chagrin, but I thought you worked in a library. 
Yeah. Do you have any idea what libraries do now? But exactly. I, I love that it expands our service. It does. I love how much we've all learned. Yes, absolutely. I think that's been fascinating. Mm -hmm. And we provide the same confidentiality and respect that we do for just a circulation. And I think people know that they're mm -hmm. going to get that kind of service from us and they'll know that they're going to get that from you and just I think libraries too are a safe place for some people who mm -hmm. are wary of going to more official government places yes. or to the courts 100%. or something I would agree and with a that. safe um we have a neutral table. space yes. we set the family around the table yeah. we had two we've had the, the largest applicant I think was uh, seven, seven. Wow. where mom and dad brought in the kids yeah. Um, and so we just set them all up around the table and some kids were playing, um, but we made sure their pictures matched and then said, okay, you can go. <laughs> you still took um, them one at a time. Right. And sometimes we'll have two of us sit down if yes. it's multiple so yes. we can be running to the photocopier and doing the things right. that we need to and do. And at one time we had all three of us working because of the seven group. Um, yeah. Two of us were actually doing applications and Lisa did the running back and forth <laughs> to the photocopier, <laughs> but we've worked out a process yeah. know, to make that as, as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. And there becomes a real shorthand you have with your colleagues so you can do it quickly and yes. efficiently. Sure. Absolutely. And so I remember Mary saying, Man, my goodness, that was, uh, you got that one done in nine minutes. <laughs> <laughs> don't, get caught, don't get cocky about that. Yeah, yeah. And I, it, yeah it was just straightforward. I will say that for those of you, we were selling this as a money-making product. Mm -hmm. um, you do have to buy postage stamps. Mm -hmm. The envelopes that you use are provided by the post office, and the mm -hmm. tracking is provided by the post office. Yes. But uh, stamps are what you'll have to buy. So we've not had full days, many days, and since August, we've made about $4,000. So that may sound like jump change to some. It may sound like big money for some. It's not yeah. been without some headaches. Mm -hmm. There's been some challenging applications that have made me really perspire. I mean, honest, I was making the paper wet. Sweating it <laughs> because the onus is on you to make that right. And they've got a deadline when they need to travel. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. To You're very when are you concerned traveling? about that. Yes. 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 To make sure we do the right thing. Although, um, something that Lisa said earlier about um, lifelong learning and what we've learned from this process is as we especially in the beginning um, there were things that we came up with based on mm -hmm. the first few applications that we did that oh we need to do this that will help us and help our, our customers mm -hmm. when they come in and one of them was um, a website sheet of paper that when the process is finished, if this customer is really concerned about, okay, where's my passport in the process? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have a sheet where the, the, the website is printed out and they can go to that website after a certain number of days and see where I'll their see passport where is oh, okay. in the process. And so again, that was just a um, result of customers being concerned, mm -hmm. you know, and we were trying to come up with the easiest right. way. And so we just printed up a whole bunch and we just give it to them at the end. Nice. So. Yeah. Is it coming? Where is it? Yes, I exactly. Get it? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of times they're concerned, but they don't want to spend the extra money to do an overnight, yep. you know, or yep. things like that. Yep. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we try to, you know, give them peace of mind yeah. to various ways. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Um, now you were talking about the website, um, yeah. the, the, this is where many people, when you, if you Google, I need a passport. <laughs> this is, well, this is the one in, please, Go to. please do dot yes. gov always. Yes. If yes. it's not a yes. dot gov, then you're not dealing with the right organization. But Correct. Joe, take it from here. This is yeah, how they find us. Sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. So you come on to our website. And again, for your own personal benefit, if you are Googling passports, just make sure it's a dot gov. Mm -hmm. Can't read. You know, can't reinforce that enough. And it won't that be the first critical. link that you'll see, so exactly. do be yeah. cautious about that. So you click on get a U.S. passport. You know, I'm general public. This is how most people find out our services, find out um, where you all are located, your hours, if you require appointments, if you take photos, all of that comes in here. So you would go up to apply for or renew my passport. And then there are a few clicks in here and we come down here you go to apply in person this is the way that I found it the easiest mm -hmm. and then you scroll down where you submit your applications 
and this is a portal that people use and this is where a majority of the people coming on to travel.state.gov are going mm -hmm. um, they're not going to look for country specific information they will most people are applying here so we would plug in if I'm here in Lincoln I want to find out where I can go I just type in the zip code and you can see and the closest facilities three places here in Lincoln other ones yes. across the state yes exactly and this yeah. is within 40 miles you can refine your search based on you know this one is um, what is it the uh, 10 facilities closest you can also do it for mileage so if you wanted to just you see in your Omaha. area yes yeah. and I can also I brought the numbers here for Nebraska but I can also get you numbers if you're curious about your region and about how many applications we could potentially be talking about. We're happy to give those numbers to you just again, so you can make a more informed decision. Mm -hmm. So we do have those numbers handy. And we are called first because we're listed first. At the top of the list. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, I see you're listed here. Um, I give them our hours of availability. I indicate every facility requires making an appointment. Mm -hmm. We certainly have the, the, the most limited hours, and sometimes they go ahead and make an appointment with us, and sometimes my job is to recommend another facility, sure. one has yeah. Saturday hours. Sure. And this is where you can see here, if your library is going to do the, this, this is the kind of information people will be able to get about right. your library from the Department of State website, whether you do do those photos mm -hmm. or not. Well, they'll still ask. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, one of the things okay. that's great about our location is we're a block from Walgreens. Yes. yes. We're a block from Vital Statistics. Yes, true. So if, they, the if they've mucked yeah. something up with documentation, so they can it isn't quickly. uncommon for us yeah. to say, take everything with you. Go there and go there. You can just yes. walk Go in. to the yeah. bank, mm -hmm. get your registered check. We've we don't got take four credit blocks, cards. Uh, four banks within one block. So they yeah. can, and we, location, location, yes. like you said earlier. That, we that is not uncommon located, that we've yeah. just sent them away and waited for them to come back. Right. Mm -hmm. We because allow an hour for each appointment, yep. and that's a good thing for us because if of they those, do need yeah, to yeah, 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 yes, exactly. Yeah. They can go down to vital statistics, statistics, and usually are back within 20 minutes mm -hmm. uh, with whether a birth certificate or a marriage certificate, which is the two most uh, popular right. things. Mm -hmm. uh, or if they forgot their checkbook and they live too far away, they can go to one of four banks that's you know yep. a block walking distance and get cashier's checks. Nice. Uh, we have head money orders too. You know, that works that works too. Right. Uh, or if um, the the only time I had to send somebody to, for a picture over to Walgreens was he had taken the picture himself and printed it out from the computer. Yeah. Oh. And which is not allowed. <laughs> so he just ran over to Walgreens back in fifteen yeah. minutes. You know, no yeah. problem. So you know, can't bring your own. Yeah. Yeah, and you yeah. you will determine what comes up on here. I mean you tell me. But, yes. uh, and then we input it, but I won't put anything in there. You don't want in there, and I'll put whatever you want in there. So, so I would yeah. say for libraries who are maybe, uh, it's a different kind of reference, but it's a it's another mm -hmm. line of reference. Yeah, it it will increase your and, reference and it, statistics because really you're answering a lot of questions about mm -hmm. a very particular topic. And like this it's, one person who said online already, she's already helping people with the website already. Yeah, so yeah. she obviously attended to I hope I'm, I'm putting right. it well. And she actually already said she wants to become she wants to know more about actually becoming the full Good. Okay. acceptance. Good. So um, we'll get Joe's info back up there yes. again. But um you are probably possibly already answering these kind of questions. You're kind of, that person mm -hmm. you're halfway there to right. this step of we're gonna actually become the place you can come to and do more and beyond. Just like just, if you wear red and khaki at Target, if people, <laughs> do, <laughs> people know that you do passports. They yes. will automatically ask you questions, yes. and we can say. So we have said to staff, we can help you with your application. We can't accept your application mm -hmm. because we're not allowed to do friends and acquaintances. Yes. But right. that's so we can you certainly can help you with your application. Make sure you've got everything all tidied up so that when then, you go, you, you'll have no trouble at all. Yep. And I can go to one of the other places right. that came up on the list that's, here and yes, like, get to right. actually. Yes. Accepted. So I think we've said what we need yeah, to say because we're so a too. little after 11 yeah, and I want to be okay. conscientious yeah. of time, but um, um, people are busy. Thank you. Yes. Thank you was, for the time. No um, I'm going to bring up, um, I had closed it by accident. I'm going to bring up the slides again so you can get Joe's info, um, which is the important part here today. Uh, well, it's all important. Sorry. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> I think what you all are saying is. Well, it's all important, important to understand what you're getting into, yes. why you'd be getting into it, and what sort of result you might expect. Yeah. I was frankly afraid. 
And we had a first person come in before we even had passport numbers. We didn't have our agent numbers. And we had someone who booked appointment with us. So we got dinged for not having a number on there. But we didn't have our numbers yet. But we, we don't ding you. <laughs> we just call and say, we forgot to give you the number. So, Sorry. Um, you know, you were, I would, it made me anxious because of the real... Um, it's an important document that you need yes, to be helping yes. them with, and we do take it seriously. Mm -hmm. But with each one, you feel good about, and then you get a really difficult one that comes in when you feel like you're getting getting it under your feet. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing I will also say is Joe and his agency has always been um, available if we have a difficult question. All we have to do is either pick up the phone or email, and uh, or sometimes we will call somebody uh, locally at another facility mm -hmm. if we need an okay. immediate answer. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, they have so always been great about helping us when us. we've been, you know, when we've had questions. So, yeah. yeah, thank you. And I think your experience would be similar around the country, no matter where you are. Um, you'll find that the customer service managers, we like our jobs and we like talking to people and we're extroverts and you can't keep us under anymore. So, you <laughs> yeah, know, right, that's, right. that's yeah. part of the problem. So a lot of times they'll say, email me because you'll get a um, much more specific response rather than the history of everything. So, <laughs> yeah. so if you're uncertain, yeah. make friends with other people locally who are providing passports. Yeah. The gentleman yes. at yeah. UNL has been very helpful to us. Absolutely. Uh, and counseling and advising on our hand carry. We had a kind of a tough one. And yeah. so make friends with other people so you've got mm -hmm. folks to reach out to. Yeah. That's very library. Yeah, go to that website well. and look <laughs> yourself to see who else in your right, area is already exactly. doing this. Yeah, so you might be able to like get some information. So you us. know, if, if you're fearful, that might be a good thing. Move towards it and do it mm -hmm. because it's it's provided us some real satisfaction. We've Absolutely. had some great dialogues. I yes. had a woman who gave me a hug afterwards mm -hmm. and Aww. gave me her business card and she said, "It's been so pleasant meeting you." <laughs> I think I and we had some mutual friends mm -hmm. and so. I, you know, you don't get those fill your cup stories all the time. No. True. And this one can provide that because they're in a in a situation where they need documentation, they need trust. And you're helping people get so that, yeah. Move towards it. I would I would advise it. Absolutely. Would you? Yes. If I mean if, if it we had to do it all over again, absolutely. Yeah. You would. And I was fortunate to have colleagues who were on board with us. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to convince them. No, yes. no, I think it was easy. So, so yeah. thank you, thank yeah. you. Contact any one of us if you have additional questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you do want to know about more detail or if you have specific questions for um, Lisa or Mary or uh, Amy or mm -hmm. said Linda and other mm -hmm. people on our staff who answers questions, um, you can call here at the Library Commission. Or if you want to actually start getting really getting set up to do this. Reach out to Joe. Of course, you saw earlier the areas he specifically covers. I know we've got people who are registered for today and who will watch this on recordings who are from all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, but you can always start with Joe, and he can send you in the right direction. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Otherwise, you can look on that map that was in the previous slides that we'll put up as well that will show you where your area is, mm -hmm. and you can track down. Um, yeah, you yeah. should be talking to don't, depending on where Don't you're do at. too much tracking. Come to me. I was yeah. going to say, come to me. I'll put <laughs> you, you put immediately in right contact place. with yeah. me. Yeah. So yeah, no guessing. No, <laughs> that's. I know that math can be a little confusing. Yeah. Right. So all right. Thank um, you. and we said some thank you for sharing the information. Of course. And thank you for the somebody time. who might be joining, wanting to do it. New world. I wish I knew where um um one mouse. Where she is from. Presidio, yeah. Presidio Library. Is that California. Presidio. Yes. Presidio. Presidio. Yeah. I would think. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So um. No, I, I were wrong. She's in Texas. Oh, uh, very cool. <laughs> She's in Texas. Mm. Yeah, right. I knew we had to go to Texas. Okay. All right, so maybe some Texas yes. can be starting yes. to do this. Great. All right. All right, well, thank you, everyone, for attending. I'm going to switch over. Oh, hey, you had a question slide. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Back to our uh, website here. Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, it has been uh, recorded, as I said. And um, you go to our website or um, for Encompass Live so far, if you Google us, um, not if you Google passports, we're the first thing, we're the only thing so far that comes up called that. <laughs> Nobody can ever call anything this. But <laughs> you'll get to our um, webpage for the Encompass Live show. And these are our upcoming shows. Um, beneath them is a link to our archives. Um, 
where is all of our recorded sessions are. So this is last week's. Um, this week's one will be up there at the top of the list. This is um, most recent ones at the top. And we'll have a link to the recording. As I said at the beginning, um, before the show, um, we record and post all of our things to all of our recordings to the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel. So we'll link to the recording. We'll have a link to your slides mm -hmm. that we'll post up there as well that we we'll do those few slides you're looking at. So you'll be able to watch it here. Uh, should be done by the end of the day today. Everyone who attended this morning and registered will get notification from me that it's available. We'll also push it out on all of our Library Commission various social media, um, uh, Facebook, Twitter, mailing lists, all of those. Um, but while I'm here on the archives, I'll show, mention that you'll see we do have a search feature here, searching all of the archives or the most recent 12 months only. Uh, Encompass Live, this is, we're in our 11th year. We started in January 2009, <laughs> and we do have all of our archives here. If I scrolled all the way down, you'd see our very first show. So do pay attention when you're looking at our archives and watching any shows. Everything has a date of when it was originally broadcast. There will be things here that will be old, outdated, the links don't work, the service might not exist anymore or has changed. <laughs> um, but we are librarians, we archive and save things for historical reasons, so this will always, always be out there. <laughs> but just pay attention to the dates on things here if you are watching um, any of our archives. But if you do want just current info, switch your search to just the most recent 12 months and anything you look up on here um, will only be um, our recent shows. Great. Uh, we do have, um, let me get back to the main page, a um, Facebook page. So if you are big on Facebook, give us a like over there. We do post reminders. Here's when to log in today, today that, today's show. Uh, when new shows are coming up, no, I don't want to log in now. Uh, when our recordings of previous shows are available, we post on here. So if you do um, use Facebook to keep up with things, we post a couple times a week on there. So that will be it for today's show. I hope you join us next week when we're starting a new series, uh, Pretty Sweet Tech. Um, a, Amanda Sweet is our technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission, and she is starting it next week with a monthly show. She started doing uh, blog posts about with her um, catchphrase, Pretty Sweet Tech. How long ago should you do that? A year or so? I don't know. I should be doing that for a while. Um, but I asked her, would you like to come on and do some Encompass Lives? We used to have this done years ago with our previous, um, a previous uh, librarian in her same position. Um, and she's picking that up again. Um, she's got this one for uh, next week on uh, using website building to launch into virtual and augmented reality. Um, she's been doing some really cool research on that. So uh, some of her shows, her shows are going to be monthly. This is her first one is next week. You'll see we've got them listed on our schedule with the dates they're going to be, but not with specific topics yet. Um, as she narrows down what each topic is, that'll be added to our calendar here. Um, for the next couple of months, it's random days um, during the month because we had other things scheduled, but the idea is to make it a regular, the last Wednesday of the month will always be, the last Wednesday will always be um, the Pretty Sweet Tech and Cup is Live. So um, sign up for that one and any of our other shows coming up um, on our schedule. You see, I've got uh, summer dates filling in here. I still got some things I'm working on, so keep an eye on our schedule. Um, so thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you guys thank all you. for being here. And thank you, and, Krista. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you. Hopefully, um, we'll see you another time on Compass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Um, and safe travels. Get your passports. <laughs> <laughs>